All right, we're going to go over the dimensional analysis notes on page six of our packet. I'm going to break this video up into two sections. The first section is just going to be the introduction into dimensional analysis. The second video will show you how to set up your problems yourselves. So I just want to let you guys know that the basic concepts behind dimensional analysis are things that you should already know. So for example, labeling the numerator and the denominator in the fraction below, we should already know how to do that. We know that this is the numerator and we know that this down here is the denominator. So we already know that from math. Then, looking at number two, what would the answer be? When we type things into the calculator, we know that seven times two fifths would go in as seven times two divided by five. Oops, forgot that. Five times, seven times two, two divided by five. So our answer would be 2.8. We know that 0.357 times 2.54 divided by 1 would be 0 0.90678. We know how to put in this number. 8.45 times 1 12th would be times 1 divided by 12. That would be 0 0.70416666. You get the, you get the idea. All right. Well, we know how to do that because we know that we need to multiply by the numerator, whatever's in the top, and we know that we have to divide by the denominator or whatever's in the bottom. So we already know how to work with fractions and how to solve mathematically fractions. So then, looking here at number four, without using the calculator, find the solutions. Well, I can see that if I have three times, let me try to zoom in here a little bit. If I have three times two thirds, so three times two divided by three, well, I can see that those threes are gonna cancel out and my answer would be two. If I have five times three fifths, and I know that's gonna be five times three divided by five, I know that my answer is gonna be three because the fives will cancel out. Conversely with C, we're getting a little longer here, five times three fifths divided by two thirds, I know that the fives will cancel, the threes will cancel, and my answer is two. And then letter D, two times five halves times three fifths times seven thirds, I know that the twos are gonna cancel, the fives are going to cancel, the threes are going to cancel, and I'm left with seven. So how did I answer the questions above? Well, I know that if a number appears in the top and the bottom, it will cancel out. So the thing with dimensional analysis is that it takes this concept of canceling things out, but really with dimensional analysis, we're gonna be canceling out the units, okay? So here, it just says change the numbers to units to see what units your answer will be in. Well, I know that from up here that if I, something's in the top and the bottom, it cancels out. So here I know the feet are gonna cancel out and my answer would be recorded in inches. Here, my miles would cancel out and my answer would be in feet. Here, my centimeters would cancel and my inches would cancel, so I'm left with feet. And here, my miles would cancel, my feet would cancel, my inches would cancel, my centimeters would cancel, and I'm left with meters. So my answer to number seven would be the same as my answer to number five, but with units. So if a unit is in the top and the bottom, it will cancel out. So then when I look at number eight, I'm gonna put it all together. So I know from before, I'm gonna multiply by the top, I'm gonna to divide by the bottom. So 3.5 times 12, you can put the divided by one or you don't have to since we know that um, the divide by one's not gonna change our answer. So I'm going to put 42. And my answer would be in inches because those feet cancel out. Then 
I do 0 0.250 times 5280 because it's in the top. I can do divide by 1 if I want. I typically don't. And that's 1320 feet because my miles cancel. Here, I've got 35 times 1 divided by 2.54 times 1, you don't have to, but you can if you want, divided by 12. So notice, I multiplied by things that were in the top, I divided by things that were in the bottom. And I get 1.14829, I'm just not going to write the rest of those numbers. And my answer would be in feet, because the centimeters cancel and the inches cancel. And here, I have 4.25 times 5280, because it's in the top, times 12, because it's in the top, times 2.54, because it's in the top, divided by 100, because it's in the bottom. And my answer would be 6,839. And my units would be meters, because my miles cancel, my feet cancel, my inches cancel, my centimeters cancel, and I'm left with meters. All right. Now, the reason why we are able to do that is because this thing right here, all of these things, is, called, is what we call a conversion factor, which is basically like we are multiplying by 1. Now, it doesn't look like 1 because there's a number here, but we know that 5280 feet is equal to 1 mile. We know that there's 12 inches in a foot, so these are equivalent values of each other. So multiplying by a conversion factor like this allows us to convert our given measurement into a new unit. All right. The next video will show us how to set up our calculations on our own.